This week wrapped up the COP28, so the UN Climate Summit, the, the 28th time that they gather together. And this one was held in the United Arab Emirates. And arguably, um, the wheels have come off of this whole process. And or... Hey, hang on. You know what I have to say about this, Francesca? What? All cops are bastards. What's up? Hey. Hey. Yeah. All cops... All cops are bastards, um, and also it's, it has been a massive cop out this entire time. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> truly, the cop process for reigning in climate change, for trans, you know, uh, uh, transitioning to renewable energy, has always been a showboaty, stupid, not stupid, but largely um, symbolic and not actually like concrete conference has has no plan to hold anybody accountable has no money to actually make a transition away from fossil fuels possible and this cop has proved that like people are actually using it to just do um you know business deals so the cop president of the uae sultan al jaber who is also the abu dhabi national oil company head has used the climate talks just like a, a very ex, as a very, very extended like business lunch. Um, so according to the Center for Climate Reporting, who, that got 150 documents from two whistleblowers, um, Al Jaber has led meetings with at least 30 different countries about new and existing oil and gas initiatives and deals and pipelines, talking about China, Egypt, Senegal, Kenya, Venezuela, and Brazil. And again, this is not to say that UAE or the Middle East is special in that. The United States definitely also does that and has done that, maybe just not as brazenly. Um, and a lot of folks, including our boy Al Gore, you know, there he was. He could have been president. He, he really could have been if he just had a, you know, balls. Um, he tweeted out, COP28 is now on the verge of complete failure. The world desperately needs to phase out fossil fuels as quickly as possible. But this obsequious draft of this resolution reads as if opaque, OPEC dictated it word for word. Well, that's because they did. Uh, it is even worse than many had feared. It is of the petrostates, by the petrostates, and for the petrostates, it's deeply offensive to all who've taken this process seriously. Yeah. There are 24 hours left to show whose side the world is on, the side that wants to protect humanity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything else is a step backwards where the world needs to truly address the climate crisis and make sure 1.5 degrees Celsius gold doesn't die in Dubai. Um, again, NATO... There's a little bit of like petro state, petro state. Let's blame the Gulf states for like the broad failure that we all knew that the COP process was a failure. And part of that is because there has been, and this is a, a senior policy analyst at Action Aid USA, Brandon Wu, who uh, who sort of explained why the COP has been such a failure. And that's because there's been no money invested in actually transitioning off of fossil fuels. He, uh, he writes, only developed countries have the ability to deliver the missing ingredient to make the whole process work. Not only are they not doing it, they're signaling they never want to do it by watering all new text recalling their obligations. It's never been clear that providing finance is not only an ethical imperative, it's also a climate imperative. If we must play a blame game, let's point the finger at the developed countries that have been consistently failing at this imperative. In other words, the whole idea behind COP was we want to transition off of fossil fuels. And now that we're actually getting to that moment after nearly 30 years, it's like, mm, but I don't want to. Mm. And UAE is more explicit. And they're like, but I want to drill more. And I'm going to use COP as, again, my own little private business meeting. But NATO, you alerted me. Uh, to an article that uh, we'll just briefly talk about, but it's very, very important that we all get very Thunberg on on our on in this moment um, and tell everyone to go fuck themselves because we are at as the Guardian. Well, the Guardian reports uh, points out that there is a new report about uh, tipping points that the Earth is hitting. Uh, tipping points uh, is are basically. Um, not slow, effectively not like slow global warming, the sort of slow boiling of the frog, but like actually fairly rapid collapses of our ecosystem. Uh, a couple of them or four of them include the melting of the ice sheets in Greenland and West Antarctic, the widespread thawing of permafrost, the death of coral reefs in warm waters, the collapse of one oceanic current in the North Atlantic. But then there's a, uh, a few more uh, like 
hang on this one this one i was a bit, but, but oh the hang on wherever it went oh the mangroves sorry the mangroves and seagrass meadows which are expected to die off in some regions if the temperature rises between 1.5 and 2 degrees celsius and boreal forests which may tip as early as 1.4 degrees celsius of heating or as late as 5 degrees celsius um so Unlike other changes, tipping points uh, such as hotter heat waves and heavier rainfall, these systems do not slowly shift in line with greenhouse gas emissions, but can flip from one state to an entirely different one. When a, cli when a climatic system tips, sometimes with a sudden shock, it may permanently alter the way the planet works. So, so if I'm hearing this correctly, some of these old ass motherfuckers who think that they're going to make as much money as possible before it every it all turns to shit might not actually make it. They might die in a wildfire or a flood as well, not just their children and grandchildren. I uh, I feel inspired. I mean, uh, my reaction <laughs> it reminds me of um, uh, a joke that I love by Will Durst. Uh, Will Durst, the dean of political comedy from San Francisco. The who, dean. <laughs> the dean who uh, had a stroke a few years ago and we wish him a speedy recovery. But he used to do this joke that I love so much about how, about the, the permafrost, I can do it word for word. The permafrost is melting. Never in the history of humanity has the permafrost melted. Hence the name permafrost <laughs> in addition to all of our other problems now we need to come up with a new name for permafrost <laughs> the frost formerly known as perma often frosty <laughs> often frosty it reminds me of um my favorite climate change joke is um aaron dewey lennox who talks about having kids and is like a lot of people think it's irresponsible to have kids you know in the time of climate collapse but at least my kid and i will die at the same time <laughs> 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 Just... yeah, that, that's 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 more uplifting than than, <laughs> than than my version of the joke which was that my plan was to fatten myself so that my kids have something to eat <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that's awful. Um, look, I think it is, I'm not saying that Gulf states aren't like mostly just running on oil and are craven, but I also think that other countries are just as craven. And uh, the idea that the cop up until this point was like, you know, all hunky dory and corporate free, that's bullshit. Um, there was never really a seriousness around transitioning at, and definitely not money being put behind it. You're talking about China, Egypt, Senegal. I mean, please like Senegal, Kenya, Venezuela, and Brazil. It's like, again, pay them, put the money down and pay them to stop exploiting the resources. That's all. That's the way forward is to pay the global South to not um, like drill. That will save us. That's what we have to do. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.